And welcome back, listeners, to another installment of Wind and Truth Preview Chapters. We have with us today, once again, The Sandbox, a.k.a. Trevor. Go check out his channel. He just posted a wonderful video on the world building of Gravity Falls. It is really well made. The intro is super smooth. I am impressed. Uh, And, of course, Griff is here with us at the beginning this time. Um, Don't be afraid. He is going to disappear about halfway through. Uh, He Mm -hmm. is fine. But... um, just just don't worry. Don't worry, folks. He'll be back next week. We <laughs> are going to read chapters one and two uh, with discussions throughout. Anything uh, y'all would like to say before we get started? I don't think so. How are you? Uh, brief, brief Sanderson news. Uh, the Stormlight TTRPG Kickstarter goes live on August 6th which is likely the day this recording goes out. So uh, you'll probably have a month uh, from when this recording goes out to back that Kickstarter. Uh, And I think here we go. So if you all please mute yourselves. Day one, Kaladin Shalon. The preview chapter starts with an image. On the image is text that says, It seemed to strike a very distinct pose as I drew. Was that for me? How could I tell? How could it tell I was observing? In the bottom left corner, there's more text with more, uh, and the, the image is of a spren, uh, and then there's more spren. I don't remember what kind, uh, and it says, A perfect moment to hold forever. In the bottom right corner is a uh, sketch of a Parshendi woman that looks like she has a crown made out of carapace. Chapter 1. Unfamiliar Ground I should have known I was being watched. All my life, the signs were there. From Nights of Wind and Truth Page 1. Kaladin felt good. Not great. Not after spending weeks hiding in an occupied city. Not after driving himself to physical and emotional exhaustion. Not after what happened to Teft. He stood at his window on the first morning of the month. Sunlight streamed into the room around him, wind tickling his hair. He shouldn't have felt good. Yes, he'd helped protect Urethiru but that victory had come at an agonizing cost. Beyond that, Dalinar had made a deal with the enemy. In just ten days, the champion of honor and the champion of odium would decide the fate of all Roshar. The scope of that was terrifying. Yet, Kaladin had stepped down as leader of the Windrunners. He'd said the proper words, but had realized words alone weren't enough. While Stormlight healed his body instantly, His soul needed time. So, if battle came, his friends would fight without him. And when the champions met atop Urethiru in ten days, nine since the first day was underway, Kaladin wouldn't participate. That should have made him anxious. That should have made him an anxious, stewing pot of nerves. Instead, he tipped his head back, sun warm on his skin, and acknowledged that while he didn't feel great, someday he would feel great again. For today, that was enough. He turned and strode to his closet, where he picked through stacks of civilian clothing neatly laundered and delivered this morning. The city was a mere two days free from occupation, and the fate of the world approached, but Eurythiru's washwomen soldiered on. None of the clothes appealed to him, and shortly he glanced at another option— a uniform sent by the quartermaster to replace the one Kaladin had ruined during the fighting. Leighton kept a rack of them in Kaladin's size. Kaladin had stuck the uniform to the wall with a lashing last night, after Teft's funeral, as a test. Eurythiru was awake, with its own bondsmith, making things... different. His lashings normally lasted minutes at best, yet 
Here this one was, ten hours later, still going strong. Syl poked her head into his room, past the hanging cloth doorway, without any thought for privacy. Today she appeared at full human size and wore a hava rather than her usual girlish dress. Dress. She'd recently learned how to color her dress, in this case mostly darker shades of blue with some bright violet embroidery on her sleeves. As Kaladin fastened the last buttons on the high collar of his uniform jacket, Syl bounced over to stand behind him. Then she floated a foot or so into the air to look over his shoulder and examine him in the mirror. Can't you make yourself any size? he asked, checking his jacket cuffs. Within reason. Whose reason? No idea, she said. Tried to get as big as a mountain once. It involved lots of grunting and thinking like rocks. Really big rocks. Biggest I could manage was a very small mountain. Small enough to fit in this room, with the tip brushing the ceiling. Then you could be tall enough to tower over me, he said. Why do you usually make yourself shorter? It just feels right, she said. That's your explanation for basically everything. Yep, she poked him. He could barely feel it. Even at this size, she was insubstantial in the physical realm. Uniform? I thought you weren't going to wear one anymore. He hesitated, then pulled the jacket down at the bottom to smooth the wrinkles across the sides. It just feels right, he admitted, meeting her eyes in the mirror. She grinned. And storm him, he couldn't help grinning back. Someone is having a good day, she said, poking him again. Bizarrely, Kaladin said, considering. At least the war is almost over, she said. One more contest. Nine days. True. If Dalinar won, Odium agreed to withdraw from Alethkar and Herdaz, though he could keep the other lands he controlled, like Eri and Yaakoved. If Odium won, everyone was forced to cede Alethkar and Herdaz to the enemy. Plus, there was a greater cost. If Dalinar lost, he had to join Odium, become fused, and help conquer the Cosmere. Kaladin wanted to think that the Radiance wouldn't follow as well, but he wasn't certain. So many people thirsted for war, even without the influence of an unmade. Storms. He'd felt it too. So, he said, dropping his smile, I'm sure more people are going to die. Perhaps people I care about, but I can't be there to help them. Dalinar will have to choose someone else to be champion and... Kaladin Stormblessed! she said, rising higher into the air, arms folded. Though she wore a fashionable hava, she left her hair white-blue, flowing free, waving and shifting in the wind. The non-existent wind. Don't you dare talk yourself into being miserable! Or what? Or I, she thundered, shall make silly faces at you, as I alone can. They aren't silly, he said, shivering. They're hilarious. Last time you made a tentacle come out of your forehead. Highbrow comedy. Then it slapped me. Punchline. Obviously. All the humans in the world, and I picked the one without a taste for refined humor. He met her eyes, and her smile was still storming infectious. It does feel warm, he said, to have finally figured a few things out to let go of the weight and step out from the shadow. I know darkness will return, but I think... I think I'll be able to remember better than before. Remember what? He lashed himself upward, floating until he was eye-level with her. That days like this exist too. She nodded firmly. I wish I could show Teft, Kaladin said. I feel his loss like a hole in my own flesh, so... I know she said softly. If she'd been a human friend, she might have offered a hug. Syl didn't seem to understand physicality like a human did, though where she'd been born, Shadesmar, the cognitive realm, she had a substantial body. He had the sense she hadn't spent much time on that side. This realm suited her. Dropping to the ground, Kaladin walked back to the window, wanting to feel the sunlight. Outside, he saw the heights of the mountains capped by snow. Wind blew across him, bringing with it fresh scents of clean, crisp air and a flock of windspread, including those that made up his armor, who soared in around him. They stayed close, 
in case they were needed. Storms. He'd been through so much so quickly. He felt echoes of anger that had almost entirely consumed him at Teft's death. Worse, the feeling of nothingness as he fell. Dark days. But days like this existed too. And he would remember. His armor spren laughed and danced out the window, but the wind lingered, playing with his hair. Then it calmed, still blowing across him, but no longer playful, more contemplative. All through his life, the wind had been there. He knew it almost like he did his hometown or his family. Familiar. Kaladin. He jumped, then glanced at Syl, who was walking through the room in a half-dance, half-stride, her eyes closed, as if moving to an inaudible beat. Syl, Kaladin said. Did you say my name? Huh? She said, opening her eyes. Kaladin. Storms. There it was again. I need your help. I'm so sorry to ask more of you. Tell me you hear that, Kaladin said to Syl. I feel, she cocked her head, I feel something on the wind. It's speaking to me, he said, one hand to his head. A storm is coming, Kaladin, the wind whispered. The worst storm. I'm sorry. It was gone. What did you hear? Syl asked. A warning, he said, frowning. Syl, is the wind alive? Everything is alive. He gazed outward, waiting for the voice to return. It didn't. Just that crisp breeze, though now it didn't seem calm. Now it seemed to be waiting for something. And there's the first chapter break. How do we feel? Pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. Um, yeah, same. That was um, a really nice way to start a book that's going to be full of horrible sadness. <laughs> Not just for yeah. the reader, but for the characters. Yeah. Um, so Trevor, earlier today, you had posed the question, who do we think is writing the epigraph? Mm -hmm. Or who do we think is, um, yeah, who do we think is the voices from the epigraph? Uh, do you want to go first? Sure. Um, I think there's a lot of people it could be. And there's, you know, crazy theories that I have. But I think at the end of the day, it's just going to be someone simple like Kaladin. I am. Well, I want to hear your craziest theory, but I'm right there with you. My craziest theory is it's Renarin. That is not too far out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I do. Just because he, he had those fits, right? Right. And right. Um, the, uh, the chapter heading is, uh, I forget the name, uh, Pilar or something like that. It's the, the Herald of the Truth Watchers. And I was looking at it like, why would you pick that one? I don't get it. And I was just mm. like, hmm, could be Renarin. Hmm. Good point. Griff. I don't know. Griff, what are you thinking? I have no idea, honestly. That's fair. Uh, I am not I'm gonna go... that whatsoever. Yeah. I'm thinking um I'm thinking taking it to the basic level using Occam's razor. The Knights <laughs> of Wind and Truth are Kaladin and Zeph because mm -hmm. he is introduced in the first book as Truthless of Shinovar, and mm -hmm. um, assuming the, the Knights of Wind and Truth book was written after the events of this book or during the events of this book take place, um, I expect Zeth is just going to be like, I'm truth, y'all. Get used to it. <laughs> maybe maybe that's why they picked the Herald of the Truth Watchers. Truth Watchers. Could be. Yeah. Could maybe be. something as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, what else do you have for this chapter, uh, Sandbox? I know you did some some more research than uh, Griff and I did. Um, well, I I, I think saving the uh, the differences for the end makes, makes more sense. sense. Sure, especially if Griff is going to leave halfway early. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, and 
uh, Sanderson's highbrow comedy with the punchline bit. Um, <laughs> I love it. Wow. Wow. I this, will say that uh, he cut out one part of that, and I was like, oh, I wish he hadn't, because it kind of ruins the comedy rule of three. Um, oh, really? Yeah, that call and response between them. It was sure. three times rather than the two there. Uh, but dang, it's fine. Dang it, Sanderson. Gotta get that word count. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. I think the only thing that really st- st- stuck out to me this time around is the uh, it's not part one, it's day one. So that makes me think, are we going to get 10 days, like 10 parts? Right. What's the I structure going to look like? Yeah. That's that what I was thinking. Yeah, actually. Yeah. And and then we get a faster or or what I was thinking because it just, I don't feel like he would do five parts in each of the other books and make the Katek work in all of the other books just to do a 10 part here and instead i think uh it will be part one day one and we just they just didn't put the part one here for some reason but i could also (laughs) i see the arguments against that like why would they not put part one here um it it might yeah we might not get that page because it's not like a chapter right i don't know but then why would we get the uh the picture i don't know Right? Yeah. Good questions. Could potentially be each day with an interlude in between. Hmm. Um, what do you guys think about Syl becoming more human? Like, this is a, a thing that's persisted through the whole series since, I mean, the first part of The Way of Kings. A lot of theories online about it, you know. Some think they might swap places. Some think she might ascend. She might become a human. What's going on with that? Griff, do you have any ideas? I don't think she's going to become a human. I think that, honestly, her becoming more and more human is just indicative of the bond that they have. Especially because uh, we know that, if I'm correct, Kaladin has yet to speak the fifth. Um, right. Right. Uh, Oath. Strong and blank on the words that I'm looking for there. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. So, honestly, I just think that... I, I don't necessarily think it's really indicative of anything except for the fact that their bond is growing stronger. I don't think there's necessarily anything special that's going to come from it apart from what we've seen already. But that's, that's just fair. my own feel, feelings. That's fair. I think I expect something is going to be realized that when looking back, we'll have known all along. That's Mm -hmm. what Sanderson likes to do. Uh, He's going to break his system in a way that it could have been broken all along. And then we'll be like, oh, why didn't we see it coming? Mm -hmm. And so my mind calls back to uh, Ishar's um, experiments in trying Mm -hmm. to make the spren come to the physical realm and exist and that makes me feel like there is an end state mm. of the Nile bond that has Spren being able, the the intelligent Spren being able to physically, or to come to the physical realm fully. Which, huh. I don't know. I could be- see, um, I could see a Shar kidnapping Syl in this book, not not for a long time, but just uh, that's just yeah. a story plot. Right, I can see yeah. that plot thread. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. interestingly enough, we already know they can take a physical form of sorts because they can become the weapon for yes, their radiant. So I'm I'm just saying I don't think that's entirely like you know co- too far off. Um, although I'm not entirely sure what that would accomplish. I mean, I'm not saying it has to accomplish anything. I just I don't know. Yeah, um, I will say that the the part that made me think still there's something more to it than just her liking humans is uh, Calvin said this realm suited her. Right. Uh, I think I think he added that from the previous mm. iteration. Um, we can talk about that at the end, but I don't know. Just it just seems like he's really hammering that like, hey, be ready for this. A good question. 
Yeah. Good point. I also, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying that that's a good point. Like, I do agree that that might honestly be foreshadowing something more than just what we've seen thus far. Mm -hmm. I did like seeing uh, her uh, playing with her size a little bit more here, too. Right. There was someone asked him a question. I think it was at Nexus or Dragonsteel right. convention last year um, about how big can she get? And Sanderson pretty much he half raffled it. Um, yeah. He kind of said like, oh, there's no real limits, um, but I'm not going to answer that question. You will see that in Wind and Truth. Right. So I, I feel like this teases that even more like we're going to see her get like super big and goofy um, to scare the crap out of some chickens or something. I don't know. <laughs> to scare the crap out of some chickens. <laughs> that would be hilarious. That would be, <laughs> do it, Sanderson. Oh, wait. Uh, no, you can't change anything anymore. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anything else before we go on to the next part of this chapter? Nope. I will mute myself. All right. And just remember, folks, we're only doing this until we get a cease and desist. Just putting it out there that this may come to an end. <laughs> no, we're we're adding commentary. We are adding commentary. This is this is fair. This is as fair use as fair use can get. In all honesty, I don't yeah. Know. But if, if 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 Dragon Steel wants us to stop, we will because we Absolutely. love them. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we'll go back to a the lot of the time. What happens? The one of the biggest questions is: Do we replace the market for the product as it is? And no. We don't. That's true. Yep. We are not right. professional voice actors by any means. So I'm a I'm I'm a I'm five percent of the way there. <laughs> okay. Six six percent. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh if you will mute again, I'm going to pretend I know how to speak like pattern in just a moment. Shallan lingered atop lasting integrity, the great fortress of the honor spren, thinking about all the people she'd been, the way she changed based on perspective. Indeed, life was largely about perspective. Like this strange structure, a hollow, rectangular block hundreds of feet tall, dominating Shadesmar's landscape. People, spren, lived along the inside walls walking up and down them, ignoring conventions of gravity. Looking down along one of the inside walls could be stomach-churning unless you changed your perspective, unless you convinced yourself that walking up and down that wall was normal. Whether a person was strong or not wasn't usually subject to debate. Yet, if gravity could be a matter of opinion... She turned away from the heart of lasting integrity and walked along the very top of the wall, looking outward to survey Shadesmar, rolling ocean of beads in one direction, jagged obsidian highlands lined with crystalline trees in the other. On the wall with her, an even more daunting sight, two spren with heads made of geometric lines, each wearing a robe of some too stiff, glossy black material. Two spren. She'd bonded two, one during her childhood, one as an adult. She'd hurt the first and had suppressed the memory. Shallan knelt before Testament, her original spren. The cryptic sat with her back to the stone railing. The lines and pattern that made up her head were crooked, like broken twigs. In the center of the lines were scratched and rough. In the center of the lines were scratched and rough, as if someone had taken a knife to them. More telling, her pattern was almost frozen. Nearby, pattern's head pulsed to a vibrant rhythm, always moving, always forming some new geometric display. Comparing the two broke Shallan's heart. She had done this to Testament by rejecting the bond after using her shard blade to kill her mother. Testament reached out with a long furled hand, and Shallan, pained, took it. It gripped hers lightly, but Shallan had the sense that was all the strength Testament had. Testament responded to being a Deadeye differently from Maya, who stood nearby with Adolin and Kalek. Maya had always seemed strong of body, in spite of being a Deadeye. 
Spren broke in different ways, it appeared, just like people. Testament squeezed Shallan's hand, bearing no expression but that torpid motion of lines. Why? Shallan asked. Why don't you hate me? Pattern rested his hand on Shallan's shoulder. We both knew the danger, the sacrifice, in bonding to humans again. I hurt her. Yet here you are, Pattern said, able to stand tall, able to control the surges, able to protect this world. She should hate me, Shalon whispered. But there's no vitriol in the way she holds my hand, no judgment in the way she remains with us. Because the sacrifice was worth something, Shalon, Pattern said, uncharacteristically reserved. It worked. In the end, you recovered, did better. I am still here, and remarkably, I am not even a little bit dead. I do not think you will kill me at all, Shalon. I am happy about that. Can I heal her? Shalon asked. Maybe if I... if I bond her again? I think, after talking to Kalek, Pattern said, I think you are still bonded to her. But, Shalon glanced over her shoulder at him, I broke the bond that did this. Some breaks are messy, Pattern said. A slice with a sharpened knife is clean. A slice with a dull one is ragged. Your break, done by a child without full intent, is ragged. In some ways, that makes it worse, but it does mean that some connection between you two persists. So? So no, Pattern said. I do not think that merely saying words once more would heal her. His head, Pattern, spun a little more slowly, as if he were contemplating something profound. These numbers are unfamiliar, Shalon. Strangely irrational, in a sequence I do not understand. I mean, I mean that we are walking on unfamiliar ground. A better metaphor for you, yes, unfamiliar ground. In the deep past, dead eyes did not exist. It was what they'd learned, in part, from the honor spren and Maya. The dead eyes, all of them except testament, had been bonded to ancient radiance before the recreants. Together they'd rejected their oaths, human and spren, humans and spren alike. They'd thought it would cause a painful but survivable split. Instead, something had gone terribly wrong. The result had been the dead eyes. The explanation might lie with Kalek, the very person Shalon had been sent to lasting integrity to kill. She squeezed Testament hand, Testament's hand. I'm going to help you. Shalon whispered, whatever it takes. Testament didn't respond, but Shalon re leaned in, wrapping her arms around the cryptic. Pattern's robe always felt hard, yet Testament spent like cloth. Thank you, Shalon said, for coming to me when I was young. Thank you for protecting me. I still no do not remember it all, but thank you. The cryptic slowly, but deliberately, put her arms around Shalon and squeezed back. Rest now, Shalon said, wiping her eyes and standing. I'm going to figure this out. That's the end of chapter one. Nice. How do we feel? Good setup for what uh, some of us know is coming. That's true. It did seem like um, this isn't spoiling anything from chapters that have been read, but it did seem like he cut the first Shalon chapter he read and mm -hmm. put a bit of it in this chapter one. I think we'll see some splicing like that just because there's so many story threads and so many characters. You're it's right. not it's not the way of Kings anymore. Like we can't have two Calvin yeah. chapters in a row. It's going to have to be a bunch of stuff coming at us. I think you're right. Which I, I like, personally. I, I'm one of those people that 
I will get through a book faster if it has shorter chapters. Yeah. Or or natural stopping points, you know? Sure. Um I think we've talked about it a little bit, just you and I, but uh, I'm reading Daniel Green's book right now, uh, right. The Witch's Sin, uh, Neon Ghosts, and those chapters are long, which is why it's taken me over two months to read it. <laughs> I feel you. And I'm reading Hank Green right now, and the chapters oh. are short and very fast-paced. Mm-hmm. Um, I call them pop- popcorn books, just kind of yeah. get through them real quick. I mean, The Lost yeah. Metal is why, I mean, I just ripped through that one. It's just super That's short true. chapters. Yeah. I love it. Miss Bourne. Very popcorny, yeah. Very good. Griff, any thoughts on the Shalon stuff here? I don't know what's been said so far about like what's going to be coming in later chapters, but I do think that she is going to fully bond both. Ooh, yeah, I think so. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a third one. I, I, I've actually seen theories that she's bonded a, uh, um, a I think it was a Miss Spren. Um, there. Someone on TikTok had a oh, great theory video on that, and uh, I'm not going to even attempt to say it because I will butcher <laughs> it. But uh, yeah, fair. it was it was I was like, oh whoa, what? How did I not wow. see that? I don't. Yeah. I wow. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. I'll be I'll be surprised. I mean, I, I honestly, at the end of this book, I think Shalon's going to have like bonded Adolin somehow too. You know, just like bonding humans. Well. <laughs> Bonding all all ten spren human singer. You know, that, she'll bond with odium soon. One of those. Uh, Shalon is actually Adonalsium. <laughs> Shalon is Adonalsium. So, wait, Alex, was it you that said Shalon is actually um, uh, cultivation or something like that? What did I say? Oh, what, yeah, you said she's actually something else. I said something brilliant. Um, As usual. Uh, yeah. Do I remember what it was? Absolutely not. Um, I am looking at the uh, read along just because I didn't have time to look at this today. And sure. um, interestingly, they did. Me- they are talking about the uh, the heralds in the chapter heading. Okay. And they're they're saying like, oh yeah, obviously, like of course it's Pala, the herald of the truth watchers, um, because. Obviously. So there's there's four slots. People that are listening and can't see us, uh, there are four slots for where he will put those like um, headshots. Um, and when they put the same person in all four, that usually means that it's very connected um, to the themes or the source, the the material within that chapter. And so this guy, who is a beta reader, is saying that, oh, yeah, obviously it's the Herald of the Truth Watchers because her aspects are learned, learned, I don't know how to say that, uh, a giving, and her role is a scholar. Mm. And I thought it was interesting. This I, I, I shrugged it off as just a, as just a cut for word, for word count, but it might be very intentional here. Kaladin at the very beginning of his of his part, I know we're on this Shalon stuff, but it's kind of going back here. Uh, sure. It he was he was testing the uh, the effects of stormlight and the surges. Um, That's true, because of the the sibling and Uruthiru now being a little bit more welcoming. Um, and he cut out a part that Calden was testing it, not because he's some scholar, but because he heard rumors about people talking about it and went, huh, mm. I guess I'll try it out in my room. But he cut that part out. And so now it does read like, oh yeah, Cal- Calden, I guess is pretty smart, which I put in here. Like that's a weird cut. Cause he's not a scholar in my mind, but the beta readers bringing up past experiences where he was teaching the men, um, the basics of healing and, you know, how to be, you know, uh, field medics and stuff like that sure. uh, and, and spear training. So, yeah, kind of, I mean, you know, the fact now. Is, you know, his his original point was the fact that he was supposed to go and study and become a doctor. Like that was his original path before he right. joined the army. So he does. I don't think he actively took the path of the scholar, but he definitely has aspects of that to his character yeah i mean even in rhythm of war when navani was like kind of like just saying you know stuff that would go over most of our head calvin's just like yeah okay sure it makes sense and then just went and go like kill some singers <laughs> right <laughs> like i didn't even think about it that's a good point 
it may yeah. be a stepping stone that is called upon later for Navani to convince him to write a book. Oh. See, see okay, so that's an interesting going, going, one. Yeah. Sorry, going back to that, I, I was thinking that the three most likely candidates are Dalinar, Zeth, and Kaladin. You know, Zeth because it's his book. Uh, right. Dalinar because he can write now. Um, and Kaladin because he hasn't had one yet, kind of. So, I mean, really, Dalinar and sure. Navani have their own. Right? But sense. it might be a mix of all three, if we're being honest. Dalinar might be writing it with Kaladin and Zeth uh, dictating. That could be it, yeah. Uh, and then I don't know if Dalinar uh, needs to even be included in that, though. But he True. is a he is a, a knight of wind and truth in a lot of ways. He controls the wind, you know, and the and the storms with the storm father. His whole his whole journey's also been kind of about truth, similar to Zeth. Um, True. So hmm. I don't know. I, I, again, it could be reaching, it could, could be forcing. Be, yeah, it could but. be a nice way to tie in if we look at the Stormlight Archive as a whole, bouncing off what you just said with. Navani's got one. Dalinar's got one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Shallan has her art in the books. Yeah. Right? So that has to count. Uh, she might. Then, she might help write too. Right. And then she putting could. putting Kaladin and Zeth as this last book gets all. Well, I guess Eshenai and Vanley. Well, I don't know. It's almost it's almost all five of the yeah. Well, well Benley, so Benley has the songs, so like she wouldn't write; she would make a song. Yeah, that's, that's what I was about to say. Is that you know I don't think the the singers have ever been indicative about things they've written. Like writing right. has never been a core part of their it's, culture. Right. So it's long. Yeah. Actually, right. low key, I kind of really want to see Benley write a song about the Stormlight Archive because be they cool. have songs for their history and their past which they're forced to memorize. But do we see them really innovate that and add to the archive of like their own songs? I don't I think we have. Will. That'd be kind of cool. That would be cool. Um, and then one more note here for this uh, read along is that they relate Shallan's part to the giving aspect of Paula, the Herald of the Truth Watchers, because she's her goal mm. in this chapter is to help Testament kind of revive her and, and bring her back, which could be seen as a giving trait. But that makes sense. Yeah. I like that. Hmm. So kind of cool. I like that. I like that as well. All right. Before we move on to chapter two, Griff, do we need to say goodbye to you? Yes, I am going to have to dip at this point. So um, right. hopefully I will be able to stick around for the entire thing next Monday, but I will talk to you guys later. Awesome. Cool. Good to see you, man. Bye. All right. Bye. And then there were two. Uh, All right. Let me mute myself. Sure. Chapter two, taking the next step. I first knew the wind as a child during the days before I knew dreams. What need has a child of dreams or aspirations? They live and love the life that is. From Knights of Wind and Truth, page 3. Syl eventually trailed out of Kaladin's room and into his family's quarters. He lingered in the sunlight and wind hovering, because why not? Light here was constantly replenished, and holding the tower's new light seemed not to push him to action the way Stormlight did. Instead... Holding it was calming. Yet he jumped when a loud noise sounded from further inside, a set of shock sprints snapping into appearance around him, like breaking yellow triangles. When he reached the doorway, however, he found the noise was just his little, little brother, Oridan, clapping. Kaladin calmed his thundering heart. He had lately become more prone to overreact to loud noises, including ones that upon reflection, were obviously nothing dangerous. No further words came from the wind, so Kaladin hovered in out into the main room, where Oridin was playing with his blocks. Syl had joined him. Though she could make herself invisible, she rarely chose to around his family. Indeed, last night they had discussed a new procedure, 
when she appeared with color on her clothing, like the violet on her sleeves, it meant she was visible to others. When she appeared as a uniform light blue, only he could see her. Gagadin, the little boy said, pointing. You need box. You, in this case, meant Oridan himself, who had noticed that everyone called him you. Kaladin smiled and used his light to make the blocks hover. Sill, shrinking down, hopped from block to block in the air as Oridan swatted them. What am I doing? Kaladin thought. A contest for the fate of the world is approaching. My best friend is dead, and I'm playing blocks with my little brother? Then, in response, a familiar voice spoke from deep within him. Hold to this cow. Embrace it. I didn't die so you could mope around like a wet horn eater with no razor. Unlike the wind, this didn't seem anything mystical. Instead, well, Kaladin had known Teft long enough to anticipate what the man would have said. Even in death, a good sergeant knew his job. Keep the officers, officers pointed the right way. Phil, Oridan said, gesturing to Sill. Phil, come Finn. He started spinning in circles, and she joined in twirling around him. Laughter spren, like silver minnows, appeared in the air. That was another difference in the tower lately. Spren were everywhere, showing up far more frequently. Kaladin sat on the floor amid hovering blocks and was forced to think about his place. He wasn't going to be Dalinar's champion, and he wasn't the leader of Bridge 4 any longer. Sigzel went to important meetings in Kaladin's place. So, who was he? What was he? You are, that same voice said softly, you are what I need, he went alert. No, he was not imagining that. His mother entered, wearing her hair tied with a kerchief, like she always had when working in Hearthstone. She settled down next to him, nudged him in the side, then handed him a bowl with some boiled lavish grain and spiced crab meat on top. Kaladin dutifully started eating. If there was a group more demanding than sergeants, it was mothers. When he'd been younger, such attention had mortified him. After years without, he found he didn't mind a little mothering. How are you? Hasina asked. Good, he said around a spoonful of lavis. She studied him. Really? he said. Not great. Good. Worried about what's coming. A block floated past, steaming with tower light. Hasina tapped it with a hesitant finger, sending it spinning through the room. Shouldn't those fall? Eventually, maybe, he shrugged. Navani has done something onto the place. It's warm now, the pressure equalized, and the entire city is... infused, like a sphere. Water flowed on command from holes in the walls, and you could control its temperature with a gesture. Suddenly a lot of strange basins and empty pools in the tower made sense. They had no controls because you activated them by speaking or touching the stone. Sill got Oridan twirling, then left him dizzy and with a few blocks as a distraction. She popped to a human size again and flopped onto her back next to Kaladin and Hesina, her face coated in an approximation of sweat. He noticed a new detail. Sill's hava was missing the long sleeve that would cover the safe hand, and she wore a glove. Or she'd colored her safe hand white and given it a cloth texture. That wasn't odd. Navani always wore a glove these days to leave both hands free. It surprised him that Syl was wearing one, though. She'd never bothered before. How do small humans keep going? Syl said. Where does their energy come from? One of the great mysteries of the Cosmere, Hesina said. If you think this is bad, you should have seen Cal. Oh? Syl said, rolling over and looking to Hesina with wide eyes, her long blue-white hair tumbling around her face. No human woman would have reacted, would have acted in such a casual way in a hava. The tight dresses, while not strictly formal, weren't designed for rolling around on the ground barefoot. Syl, however, would Syl. Embarrassing childhood stories, the sprint said. Go, talk while his mouth is full of food and he can't interrupt you. He never stopped moving, Hesina said, leaning forward, except when he finally collapsed at night to sleep, giving us brief hours of respite. Each night, I would have to sing his favorite song and Liren would have to chase him, and he could tell if Liren was giving a half-hearted chase and would give him an earful. It was honestly the cutest thing to see Liren being scolded by a three-year-old. 
I could have guessed Kaladin would be tyrannical as a child, Syl said. Children are often like that, Syl, his mother said, accepting only one answer to any question, because nuance is difficult and confusing. Yes, Kaladin said, scraping the last of the lavish from his bowl. Children. That's a worldview that, obviously, solely afflicts children, never the rest of us. His mother gave him a hug, one arm around his shoulders, the kind that seemed to grudgingly admit that he wasn't a little boy anymore. Do you sometimes wish the world were a simpler place? Hasina asked him. That the easy answers of childhood were, in truth, the actual answers? Not anymore, he said, because I think the easy answers would condemn me. Condemn everyone, in fact. That made his mother beam, even though it wasn't an easy thing to say. Then Hasina's eye, eyes got a mischievous sparkle to them. Oh, storms, what was she going to say now? So, you have a spren friend, she said. Did you ever ask her that vital question you always asked when you were little? He sighed, bracing himself. And which question would that be, mother? Dung spren, she said, poking him. You were always so fascinated by the idea. That was Tien, Kaladin said, not me. Hasina gave him a knowing stare. Mothers. They remembered too well. Shame spren popped into existence around him, like red and white petals. Only a few, but still. Fine, he said. Maybe I was... intrigued. He glanced at Syl, who was watching the exchange with wide eyes. Did you... ever know any? Dung spren, she said flatly. You're asking the sole living daughter of storms, basically a princess by human terminology, this question? How much poop do I know? Please, can we move on? Kaladin said. Unfortunately, Oridan had been listening. He patted Kaladin on the knee. It's okay, Gagadin, he said in a comforting voice. Poop goes in potty. Get a treat. This sent Syl into a fit of uproarious laughter, flopping onto her back again. Kaladin gave Hasina his captain's glare, the one that could make any soldier go white. Mothers, however, ignored the chain of command, so Kaladin was saved only when his father appeared in the doorway, a large stack of papers under his arm. Hasina walked over to help. Dalinar's Medical Corps, Tent Layouts, and Current Operating Procedures, Lyran explained. Dalinar, eh? she said. A few meetings and you're on a first-name basis with the most powerful man in the world? The boy's attitude is contagious, Lyran said. I'm sure it has nothing to do with his upbringing, Hesina replied. We'll instead assume that four years in the military somehow conditioned him to be flippant around light eyes. Well, I mean... Lyran and Hesina glanced at their son. Kaladin's eyes were a light blue these days, never fading back to their proper dark brown. It didn't help that although he was sitting, he was hovering an inch off the ground. Air was more comfortable than stone. The two of them spread the pages out on the counter at the side of the room. It's a mess, Liren said. His entire medical system needs to be rebuilt from the ground up, with training in how to properly sanitize. Apparently, many of his best field medics have fallen. Many of his best in all regards have fallen, Hasina said, scanning the pages. You have no idea, Kaladin thought. He glanced at Syl, who had sidled over to sit closer to him, still human-sized. Oridin was chasing blocks again, and Kaladin... Well, despite his tension, he let himself bask in it. Family. Peace. Syl. He'd been running from disaster to disaster for so long, he'd completely forgotten this joy. Even eating stew with Bridge Four, precious moments of respite, had felt like a gasp of air when drowning. Yet here he was, retired, watching his brother play, sitting next to Syl, listening to his parents chat. Storms, but it had been a wild ride. He'd managed to survive. And it wasn't his fault that he had. Syl rested her head, insubstantial though it was, on his, soldier, on his shoulder and as she watched the floating blocks. It was an odd behavior for her, but so was her being human-sized. 
Why the full size? he asked her. When we were in Shadesmar, she said, everyone treated me differently. I felt more like a person, less like a force of nature. I'm finding I missed that. Do I treat you differently when you're small? A little. Do you want me to change? I want things to change and be the same all at once, she looked to him and probably saw that he found that com completely baffling. She grinned. Suffice it to say that I want to make it harder for certain people to ignore me. Is being this size more difficult for you? Yep, she said. But I've decided I want to make that effort. She shook her head, causing her hair to swirl around. Do not question the will of the mighty Spren, Princess Kaladin Stormblast. My whims are as inscrutable as they are magnanimous. You were just saying you wanted to be treated like a person, he said. Not a force of nature. No, she said. I want to decide when I'm treated like a person. That doesn't preclude me also wanting to be properly worshipped. She smiled deviously. I've been thinking of all kinds of things I want of... I've been thinking of all kinds of things to make Lunamore do. If we ever see him again. Kaladin wanted to offer her some consolation, but he honestly had no idea if they'd ever see Rock again. This was a different shade of pain. Distinct from the loss of tef Teft, distinct from the loss of Moash, or the men they'd thought Moash had been. That brought the reality of the situation back to him, along with the strange warnings the wind had whispered. He found himself speaking. Father, what's the battle look like currently? A ten-day deadline. Seems like everyone might simply rest and wait it out? Not so, unfortunately, Naren said. I'm warned to expect heavy casualties in the next few days, as Dalinar anticipates the fighting will last right up to until the deadline. In fact, he fears the enemy might push harder to capture ground in the unclaimed hills and the frostlands. Apparently, per the agreement, whatever each side holds when the deadline arrives, that's what they get to keep. Storms. Kaladin imagined it. Fierce battles over unimportant, uninhabited land but which both sides wanted to hold nonetheless. His heart bled for the soldiers who would die in the nine days before it would all end. Is this the storm? He whispered. Syl so glanced at him, frowning, but he wasn't talking to her. No, that voice replied. Worse. Worse. He shivered. Please, the wind said. Help. I don't know if I can help, Kaladin whispered, hanging his head. I don't know what I have left to give. I understand, it replied. If you can, come to me. Where? Listen to the bondsmith. He frowned. The day before, Dalinar had mentioned having a duty for Kaladin and Shinovar, involving the Herald Ishi and some odd company. Kaladin had already resolved to go, so perhaps he could help. Come to me, the wind repeated. Please. There was a high storm tonight, and Kaladin had thought to use it, and the stormlight it offered, to get to Shinovar. However, Dalinar had promised him more details before he left. So, taking a deep breath, Kaladin stood and stretched. It had been wonderful to spend time with his family, to remember that peace, but even as worn out as he was, there was work for him to do yet. I'm sorry, he said to his parents. I've got to go. Dalinar wants me to try to find Ishi, who has apparently gone mad. Not surprising, considering how Taln and Ash are faring. His mother gave him an odd look, and it took him a moment to realize it was, be it was because... He was speaking so familiarly of heralds, figures of lore and religious devotion the world over. He didn't know any of them well, but it felt natural to use their names like that. He had stopped revering people he didn't know the day Amaram branded him. God or king, if they wanted his respect, they could earn it. Son, Laren said, turning away from his many sheets of paper. From the way Laren said the word, Khaled embraced himself for some kind of lecture. He was unprepared for Liren to walk over and embrace him, awkwardly, as it wasn't Liren's natural state to give this sort of affection. 
Yet the gesture conveyed emotions Liren found difficult to say. That he'd been wrong. That perhaps Kaladin needed to find his own way. So Kaladin embraced him, too, and let the joy spread, like blue leaves, swirl up around them. I wish I had fatherly advice for you, Liren said. But you've far outpaced my understanding of life. So I guess, go and be yourself. Protect. I... I love you. Stay safe, his mother said, giving him another side hug. Come back to us. He gave her a nod, then glanced at Syl. She'd changed from a Hava to a Bridge 4 uniform, trimmed in white and dark blue, with her hair in a ponytail like Lynn usually wore. It was strange on Syl, made her look older. She'd never truly been childlike, despite her sometimes mischievous nature, and her chosen figure had always been that of a young but adult woman, girlish at times, but never a girl. In uniform, with her hair up and wearing that glove on her safe hand, she seemed more mature. It was time to go. With a final hug for his brother, Kaladin strode out to meet his destiny, feeling like he was in control for the first time in years. Deciding to take the next step, rather than being thrust into it by momentum or crisis. And while he'd woken up feeling good, that knowledge, that sense of volition, felt great. Nice. So there we are. That's chapter you think, two. You think that's the last time he ever sees his parents? Do I think that's the last time he ever sees his parents? No. No. no okay. I'm going to firmly hold on to the idea that he is one of the writers of, Wind, of the Knights of Wind and Truth and that he is writing it after everything is done. Okay. So, uh, and I believe your Thiru is going to be like fully safe and his parents are going to stay there. So I think, nice. I think they'll see each other again. Uh, cool. And if they don't, they'll always see each other in the spiritual realm. Wholesome theories that I'm always down for because they are rare. That's right. Yeah. yeah. With Sanderson breaking everybody. Um, I don't trust myself to not talk spoilers outside of the Stormlight Archive. So <laughs> that's fair. You should yeah. give the people a warning. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do. Um... Okay. Briefly, before we go to full spoilers, mm -hmm. uh, the. The fact that the wind is talking to Kaladin and the fact that in the second epigraph it says, you know, the wind is, has been there for me, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. that, is, that is why I firmly believe it's, it's Kaladin speaking those words. Um, I just Yeah, I, well, so, okay, a couple things on that. The wind is capitalized in that epigraph, I think, not in the uh, chapters. That could be, it could be the same entity and it's just that Kaladin doesn't know what it is yet. Right. And uh, Sanderson doesn't want us, the reader, to, un to understand the weight of it yet. And so we will learn alongside Kaladin that it is this greater wind entity or something, right? That's true. Um, or they're different things. Or they're different things. Yeah. But I, I think, and I don't want to misspeak, uh, I, I know there is something about this in the, the preview chapters that we are to get, but I do think that there have been hints in the past that Zeth had a kind of voice talk to him. And I won't say more than that um, when um, he was a child. Okay. Um, somewhere maybe an Oathbringer because I think it was Oathbringer because Oathbringer was supposed to be Zeth's book at first. Book five was supposed to be Dalinar's and they switched, which is another mm. reason that I think you're right that Zeth, this, the book is at least partially about him. But I also why I think Dalinar might be involved just to like help them write their story. Sure. That, that um, makes sense. I could I could yeah. see if yeah if that plays out and Zeth was also spoken to by somebody then yeah I definitely could see this being Zeth. Um, I could also see it being if if that's the case I could see it being only Zeth because our boy Kaladin is not around anymore. And and, and you know he had the uh, the Windrunner um, honor blade for some time. That's true. He still can sort of kind of fly, just not as good as Windrunners. Um, the the beta reader on the uh, the read along here says he's inclined to believe that it is a Windrunner that mm. uh, is dictating it at least, um, or sure. it's about. Um, 
And I think that might be a little bit of a, uh, a red herring. I don't think it has to be that. Um, but another <laughs> another theory that it could be um, it could be about Kaladin, but Kaladin also died, and this is stuff that he and Zeth talked about during their little buddy cop adventure. That's true. Yeah. And Zeth is like kind of I will speak for him as well, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I like I it. so theory, many so, so many, many options, and I love it. So <laughs> I love it. It's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, you think go to full Cosmere spoilers? Okay. Sure. I don't. I don't know when they'll come up, but I just. I just don't trust myself. Just in case. <laughs> just yeah. Just listening and thinking about it the whole time. I was like, oh, this is like that. This is like that. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so this chapter reinforced what the end of Rhythm of War taught us uh, with Dalinar and Odium's agreement. Um, Sanderson's trying to drive in every part of that over and over again so that we know what the stakes are. And mm-hmm. when those stakes are thrown out the window because something happens, then we are appropriately told. Um at least we had a we had an expectation of what they are, right? He's doing he's giving us the promise that right. the land people have when the war's over that's what they got. Uh, mm-hmm. And I had not and, thought about that. That was like reading that for the first time was like, oh shoot, okay. So there's a lot of war that's going to be happening yeah, in this book. That's what I was thinking at the end of Rhythm of War is like the Odium's going to go full bore and just use whatever options he has to push yeah. people out. Of... Maybe he thinks it'll placate the humans to waiting for 10 days. He's like, all right, let's take everything. Right. Right. Yeah. Except I guess Aleph Carr and, and um, Herdaz. what was the other one? Uh, Herdaz. Herdaz. Yeah. Yeah. With the Herdazians. Yeah. Um. So you want to start with the heading? I do. Okay. So, this one has uh, the same, you know, those four boxes. It's the same um, picture, but this time it is. Uh, oh, I don't have the tab up anymore. What did I do with that? Um, it is the Herald of, I think it was the Else Callers, or no, it's the Edge Dancers. V- oh, Vidal. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, here's the read along. They are. So their aspects are loving and healing and her role was healer. Um, And this seems pretty obvious because Kaladin's entire chapter here has to do with healing himself and with family love. So absolutely. That's what the beta reader thinks uh, is the connection here. Um, That's kind of piggybacking off our last uh, chat, I guess for chapter one on this stuff. Uh, I totally forgot that, you know, Kaladin is, um, trying to pursue ways to figure out how to heal people's minds when they're in these dark places, right? right? He's trying to give people resources to battle depression and, you know, dark thoughts and stuff like that, that he's been through. And I totally forgot that in rhythm of war, he made some very strong and smart arguments, like statistical arguments right? um, about, you know, like studies and like how to actually research this sort of stuff. So I, I, I think you guys are right. Like he is way more of a scholar than I like instinctually think that's, of him being. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Good call. Good call. So the last one being scholarly. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Makes sense now. It does. It is making sense. He's really... He he really set the stage in Rhythm of War for Kaladin to be able to help Ishii. Um, yeah, at least enough. Like, so okay, so who do you think is the wind? I think Honor is the wind. So so you think I have, Honor. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. I'm glad you said uh, that. Yeah. Uh, what part of up, Honor do you think it is? What part? Like yeah, splintered, and so. Do you think it's the splintered shard? Do you think it's the storm father, or Dalinar speaking through the storm father, or Ishi speaking through the storm father, or do you think it might be Tanavas himself? Because I had a, a a thought while you were reading this that wait, honor was splintered. What happened to Tanavas? If, if he had god level of powers, could he maybe just be floating around the spiritual realm? Or even the cognitive realm? No, the spiritual realm, because that's kind of like the land of the the shards. Yeah, yeah, but also we saw um, 
um, in secret history, um, preservation could uh, talk with Kelsier in the cognitive realm. That was just full spoilers. That was... Yeah, yeah. good thing we called it out. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I knew it. Like, yeah, yeah, but like Kelsier's in the cognitive realm and that's where he punches God in the face. So, yeah, spiritual and or. Is that true? Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. Why would he be... Why? Okay, when you die, why would your soul go to Shadesmar and not to the spiritual realm? You're, well, when you die, your soul goes to the great beyond. Well, no, 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 but the great beyond is like a gate that is in the spiritual realm. And when you go through that gate, not even yeah. shards who reside yeah. in the spiritual realm, like right. not even they know what's past there. So it's okay. like, it's like a, a, a mini level within that level of sure. sorts. Sure. Yeah. So I don't, okay. Maybe I got to reread but, that one okay, for but, sure. But preservation wasn't fully dead when he interacted with Kelsier. So, okay, so was it, was it the shard or was it the vessel or both speaking to Kelsier? I'd argue it was both. Okay. It was still Laris uh, as the vessel. And then Kelsier mm -hmm. took over the vessel in, and stayed in the cognitive realm, but, but saw, well, I don't know if he stayed there. I guess he was everywhere huh. all at once. So, okay. but, you know, but let's, yeah. let's go with, um, l let's keep going with your theory, like Tanavast. Well, who, who do you think it is? You said honor, oh, right? Right, so, right? So honor. Yeah. Um, I liked where you were going with Tanavast there. I was thinking it was some piece of honor that was trapped in Shinovar, uh, by an unmade. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, and I mean, then, bouncing yeah. off your idea, if that unmade is holding on to the cognitive shadow of Tanavast, ooh, somehow, I love that. It, keeping it from the great beyond or whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I really like that. I mean, we have yeah. to we have to see Tanavast at some point, even if it's a flashback. I don't care because it's just been teased too much, right? And I don't want it to just be an exposition dump, but like, oh, here's the background of Tanavas. Like, no, 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 no. Like, he's gonna he's gonna show up in some form, right? At, at some point in the Stormlight Archive, it might not be this book. It might be it might be Talon's book. It might be Yasna at the very yeah. end. I don't know, but we'll at least see him in Dragonsteel. Uh, uh yeah, yeah, or, yeah. We'll at least no, see yeah. Him there. But but yeah. teasing Kaladin as son of Tanavast, and then not having interaction would be like Sanderson would need to have a pretty good reason. Well, can you say that again? Uh, teasing by saying Kaladin is the son of Tanavast. Right. Sanderson would need a really good reason for there to not be some sort of interaction. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think yeah. that, I think it's earned for sure, especially with how many books it's been since, I mean, was that way of Kings words of radiance? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the other theory, though, is I do like it maybe being Ashar, um, especially okay. because I don't know if it's the sane Ashar or the insane one. Is it is it the sane one right. pleading for Kaladin to come help and heal him, bring him back to his former self, or is it the insane one that's luring him in, like trying to take him out for good for whatever reason that might be? Maybe he's working with Odium. Maybe he's got his own little agenda. I don't know, yeah. but he sees Kaladin as a threat. But yeah, I, I like that idea too. I like that idea. I find that more out of the realm of possibility, but it's still within the realm of possibility. Yeah. I, and I, I did think maybe it was Bada Mishram as well, but I like your idea better that it's a, uh, an unmade that right. has Tanavast trapped or imprisoned in some way, right. and he's managed we, to break through and, and communicate. Def, right, because let's see. There was that art that they revealed like two years ago of Kaladin mm -hmm. and Zeth looking yeah. over the Shin, like Shinovar. Uh, yeah. Shinovar. Uh, and it was obviously under the influence of the unmade of, of un unmade. Yeah. You can see like this purple black dome. Right. Yeah. Right. So that just, that just makes me think that part of honor is there and that it somehow is calling out via the wind. That's what I feel. Right. Yeah. Now. 
Um, something else that so I saw some theories online after last week about the Stormfather and the prologue, and kind of going with some of the stuff that you said. Um, I'm curious if the Stormfather might play a bigger role in this book, and a bunch of people are going to be like kind of speaking through him because okay. someone had a theory that it wasn't the Stormfather, but it also was the Stormfather. It was both Ashar speaking through the Stormfather and the Stormfather. And Gavilar couldn't tell the difference. And so we as the reader couldn't tell the difference until like the very end where something happened. Maybe like Ashar signed off and the Stormfather's just like, you know, I've given up on the Colin family or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's going to be more people kind of speaking through him in this book, whether that be Ashar, Honor, Dalinar, yada, yada. Huh. I like that theory. I like I see Ishar as a threat, but I don't see him as a mastermind. I see him too insane for manipulating Gavilar like that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's a good point. Because um, he he hmm. he he was. So when we see Ishar with Dalinar in Rhythm of War. Almost everything Ishar was saying when insane was not necessarily a lie because he was believing it, but it was the opposite of truth, right? Right. If I don't, I don't think insanity or sanity is contradictory to masterminding plans. I mean, when you take in Taravangian, right? You know, um, like functioning his 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 specific insanity. Yeah, but I feel like it it hinders his morality more than his his brain functionality. That's your you got me there potentially because he's doing all these studies and experiments with Spren and like he still has this vast, you know, centuries, millennia of knowledge. Um. I don't know. I feel like yeah, he's got to be doing if, something. If follow me here for a second, if mm-hmm. Ishar was insane when talking to Gavilar as through the through the Stormfather, mm-hmm. if he was insane, then right, hold that thought. If he was insane while talking to Dalinar when the oaths weren't being sworn, and he only told Dalinar things that were not true then potentially logically when the Stormfather reveals the truth to Gavilar at the end of that prologue and says Kalek is a herald um, they were and and they weren't on Bray's then Ishar shouldn't have been able to say that truth Potentially. Now, I could be wrong. We only have a small sample here. But the fact that the Stormfather does speak the truth, even though he had lied to Gavilar and then spoke the truth, is separate, is different enough from how Ishar was talking to Dalinar that it makes me very skeptical. That's you, where you mean, you mean Gavilar, right? Uh, Rhythm of War, Dalinar and Ishar talking. Oh, okay. When right. Ishar was in, still insane. That it just makes me super skeptical. Yeah, that makes I, it, it almost makes me wonder if the Stormfather isn't aware that Ashar is sometimes speaking through him because I feel like Ashar would be able to do that. I can see that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's there's something to it. We could theorize all day, but we could. We could. Yeah, I don't know. That's what the people are here for. <laughs> They're definitely not here for us reading the chapters. They are here for our discussion. <laughs> They're here for what makes them us have a different place in the market according to Griff. (laughs) Fair enough. Uh, Is there anything you want to talk about specifically on this, uh, this chapter here? Um, Oridin was super cute. Oridin is super cute. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Sucks that he's going to die, right? It, it absolutely sucks (laughs) that he's going to die. No, Um, that's Gavinor, not Oridin. Dude, Oridin versus Gavinor. I think I saw someone theorize that. (laughs) Oridin. I think I theorized that. Um, Maybe. Uh, I think he did. Yeah. Or I, I theorized too much. Um, I think, I think Orden and Gavinor are just there. Not just there. They're going to play a big part in the back half. Oh yeah. And 
they'll be and they will have weight because of what we know their families did before. So. Yeah, I I kind of see it as that um that going from Mistborn era one to era two. Right. That the era one kind of is like caked into era two as like the lore in the background. And, and I think that's a really cool element um, and kind of dimensionality to that series. Absolutely. But when you have less of a, you know, that was like a 300 year gap when you go right. to like 10, 15, 20 years, it's more, it's even more personal to the character's journeys, yeah. which yeah. is where I think you're right. Like he's going to use Gavinor and Oradin as like super emotional journeys because we know intimately of their background, like what was going on when they were kids and stuff like that leading right. up to the, the events that shaped them. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Gavinor becomes yeah. King of Alethkar or no, I guess Yasna takes away the, uh, Gavinor tries to be elected president of Alethkar. Dude, Ga- Gavinor is effed because I mean, if Dal, I, I don't see how, I don't see why Dalinar would not like become the fused servant of Odium. It's just such a big stake and it's so specific that I like, like why wouldn't Sanderson do that to give further stakes for the second half of the Cosmere? Um, Dang. That, I mean, he I would lose everybody but Navani. I want to disagree with you, but that's so true. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's just, we can, we can here. Let's, let's do a little conversation on some of the tricks that Sanderson does. You know, I mean, we've been yeah. reading him for a decade and there's just certain things that he does. And I have another point on this that um, might be kind of yeah. interesting. But yeah, I mean, he's he's very, very purposeful. He does not waste words. Every word in these books, there is a reason yeah. and, and a thought behind them. So when you have something so specific, you know, and not just this case, but, you know, anything in these books, it's it's either going to happen yeah. Or it's a red herring meant to to blindside you and, and trick you. Those are the two options. And I know that's a, a logical fallacy, but it really is like those are the, the main two like kind of tricks he does. Right. Um, another one is he loves to like within a certain scene or a chapter, he loves to give you a bunch of puzzle pieces yep. and relate those puzzle pieces to different puzzles. And then later go, no, 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 no. It's actually all just one big puzzle. And we're like, oh, I, sh- I should have seen that. Um, he does like a great a, a great uh, point to this in this chapter is uh, we see how Urethiru has become like this this um, you know uh, utopia for Spren. They're, they're all coming around. Sure. It's it's that's lively, and uh, even Kaladin is using what appears to be tower light. It sounds like he's using that's tower right. light, he's using tower light, it's or tower light is somehow. He infused um, a block with tower light. What's that? He infused a block with tower light. Did it say that or did it, it just that. it said it explicitly? Where did it say tower light? I might have it missed said, that. It said it after um the first in in the second chapter. Oh yeah, block floated past teaming with tower light. Okay. Oh, I missed that. Okay. Yep. yep. Interesting. Yeah, so perfect. Because um yeah. Okay. So, so we have that kind of that piece going on and you're supposed to kind of be wondering like, how do those mechanics work? I thought they could only use Stormlight, Tower mm-hmm. Light. We were told, we we spent the whole book learning how Tower Light is not Stormlight. They are different. Right. It has Stormlight. It's, it's part of its right. DNA, but it is different. Um, so it's, that's weird that they can just automatically use it, but also not that weird because right. again, you know, it's, 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 it's the, yeah, Sanders is the mechanics and they're perfect. But um, when you look at Syl, you should be wondering, okay, what's going on with Syl? Why is she becoming more human? And, and it seems like it's ramping up in right. Urethiru. And, yeah. And you have to wonder, oh, maybe it's because there is a life flight now that has a huge presence in the tower, which wasn't there because the sibling wasn't awakened yet. So does life flight have this interesting... um relation with the honor spren or maybe maybe other spren as well i don't know it's you know again the, these are they're, okay. they're kind of two different okay. puzzles maybe but it right. does seem like they they might be kind of one of the same right right he's showing us the puzzle pieces yeah uh, i um personally am typically blindsided by every sander lanch and every reveal <laughs> um i do not think too deeply that's uh, fair when, well, that's why like, I like the the weekly because you get time to think yeah, about it. <laughs> you do get time to think about it. Yeah. Absolutely. 
um, I was completely blinded by the void spread or the void bringers bit, even though pattern specifically says to a human, if you want to know what a void bringer is, look in the mirror. <laughs> I don't um, think he knew either, <laughs> but he did pattern knew. He, Oh, he did not. Did it? He? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Several times, several times. He's just pattern, so blunt. <laughs> pattern says humans are void bringers just without saying humans are void bringers. And on a second reread, you pick that up and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm an idiot for not believing this. You just I've, I've it's it's interesting to me how similar the cryptics and the ink spren are. Right. And I've I've had lengthy conversations on TikTok with other people about this because I really think that they should be swapped. Um. Yep. Like naming wise, because light weavers with the drawing and the the ink cryptic, yeah yeah and, and the then cryptic. cryptics because they're all mathematical and logical and the else scholars are all logical scholars yeah, yeah. Also, there, there is a great it. point to yeah. it but i think there's more points to them being swapped making more sense than there is to how it is now personally yeah but yeah. sanderson do what sanderson do and i will not complain yep that's yeah yeah um anything else you want to talk about before we do like differences um Love the character growth. Yeah. It's it's nice to have these slower moments, honestly. Mm. Especially if, if it is going to ramp up. You know, I said last week, like, I want the energy up here and I don't want it, like, you know, oscillating okay. too much. Yeah. I want it kind yeah. of around that, and you then, know, we got 10 days, like, it's, right. I wanted to feel like this constant mm, in the back of my head. It's just like growing, 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 like a horror Absolutely. movie. Yeah. If that had yeah. been, if this, if this had been in Mistborn, it would have been uh, Kaladin said goodbye to his parents and went to go meet Dalinar. Not five paragraphs of yeah, yeah. So, just yeah, I'm sure it would have been more than that. I can't. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where sometimes I I wish you know books I was reading were shorter, right? But by the end of it, and and it like goes for movies and TV shows too. But by the sure. end of it, if it's something you really love, all you're gonna want is more time with these characters. Yeah, give me yeah. this stuff. Like I'll yeah. take a hundred books of this. If it means I never get another Sander Lanch, just to spend more time with these characters because I really That's do fair. love them that much. That's true. Yeah. But, Let's go okay. into uh, the differences. Yeah, some differences. Um, starting with chapter one, because I don't think we did those. Nope. Um, obviously, there's a ton of cuts. Um, right. Some passages shifted around just because he's he's making that word count cut, but he also wants them to make sense. Um, and I think he did he he accomplished that. Um, we talked about that one already with Cal then cutting out the, uh, the rumors. You talked about the comedy rule of three earlier. Yes. Okay. So there's the addition here that Syl has learned how to add colors. And we, we learned, I think in chapter two here that she, that's kind of a signal to Cal then like, Hey, here's who I'm showing myself to. I bet that Um, later in the book. Yeah, so she now has darker shades of blue than the, like the very bright, you know, blue white kind of storm lady look. Sure. But also a bright violet embroidery, which I think is very specific for a reason because violet is Odium's color. Or at least void void light color. Yeah, void light. Okay. So I, I don't I don't know why, but I don't you know what again I, think I don't think it's just in there for no reason. I think I think it's in there for a reason, and this is this is the most capitalist reason ever. They put mm-hmm. it in there to sell merch um for the sill plush, and they wanted more than just it's a chase variant. <laughs> chase uh, variant. Yeah, there you go. Um yeah. no, I I mean realistically Sill would be able to use colors most closely uh, on the spec- wavelength spectrum to blue. Um, so v- violet, I mean, really it'd be indigo, right? But I think you might, I mean, if things like that keep popping up, you're definitely right. Um, I'm, ke- mm. I'm keeping it simple in my head, but that's also because I'm not good at picking up on the little things like we just learned. So I, I was going to make a video on this like the last couple months and I just couldn't find a way to make it interesting and well, succinct here. But yeah, so 
the lights and the colors I think are just really cool. Okay. And God, I mean, Sanderson has really thought of everything. Everything is so intentional. It blows my mind. It's so awesome. But like, okay, we have honor being blue. Stormlight is blue. Right. Life light is green. Void light is purple. Yeah. What is the common denominator of those three lights and colors? Blue. Blue. Um, I don't know what that means. But again, I don't think it's a coincidence. You take blue plus yellow, you get life. You know, you can look at color theory. You know, okay. you, yellow is like happiness and, right. um, you know, all, all these different traits, right? Sure. And that gives you a green. If you add purple, which is like regal and like, um, you know, purple has red in it, which is like wrath. So you could have like this regal kind of wrath of passion, which, true, you know, represents ODM. And then with blue, you know, it's... uh purple so i don't it's it's interesting mm. um i'm sure there's artists out there that could be way more eloquent with that and and talk for an hour about that kind of stuff but i i just think it's interesting that blue is the common denominator in all of them that is neat but yeah um i haven't seen anyone talk about this so i th- figured it was worth it i agree but uh let's see what else do we get um there is an addition of kind of rehashing the contest rewards and consequences again it's nothing right. new um but Kaladin also wonders if radiance might follow dalinar if he did turn fuse again i it seems like sanderson is leading towards that hmm. um not necessarily saying that we're gonna lose but i, I think it's gonna be some trickery or something um and he's saying that like a lot of the, the knights are feeling this like urge to fight And that's one of the reasons that they might he's feeling it himself too, he says. And it makes me like immediately my mind went to wait, is the thrill like Loki kind of back or Mm -hmm. did it never leave? Is it's president's president's building somehow? Um, So I don't know. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, the thrill is always in the hearts of men. (laughs) Maybe. Hmm. Maybe he had to put in, maybe he wanted to put in the lifelight feeling calming to yeah. kind of counteract. So there's another, yeah. this is one of the more interesting cuts. Um, he did cut out a part where it mentions that Syl still from time to time likes to imitate Windspren. So I feel like taking that out while also going for this, you know, she's trying to, be more human right ish yeah oh man it really seems like he's pushing something there which uh i wish griff was here to hear that part yeah hopefully he'll listen yeah um this is probably nothing but he cut out an analogy of urithiru replenishing his stormlight or i guess just his light now uh, to dalinar opening a perpendicularity um probably nothing but yeah figure call it out there is an it goes there when sorry you, your mind kind of goes there when when kaladin explains it feels like it's infused mm-hmm. um so we also get the addition that kaladin feels um calm with the tower light rather than right. this push to fight or, or do action and it makes me wonder if it's because it is stormlight balanced with life light. Does life light have this calming presence? I don't know. Maybe. Could be. It's a good theory. Um, obviously the wind sequences and like those conversations are all new. That was not oh. in there in there previously. So that's probably going to be one of the bigger talking points around the uh, Cosmere content creators is just talking mm. about the wind stuff. Cause that is brand new. Nobody sure. knows except for the beta readers. I, I expect, <laughs> yeah, I expect Sanderson got to a major point and said, or he got feedback from the alpha and beta readers that said something like, Hey, you didn't like promise this enough or like, Oh yeah. Cause he, he be. did that in Oathbringer, right. With changing or adding the lighthouse sequence so that it made sense. Shalon, Kaladin and Adolin showed up at the battle of Thalen field. Um, because people were saying it doesn't make sense. 
So I expect that wait, why, that. wait, why was that? Why did it make uh, sense? So, about so without the lighthouse where Kaladin gets the visions that they need to go to the Thalina, mm-hmm. um, the promise was that they were going to get a ship to um, somewhere else. They weren't, or they were, I can't remember if they were going to go with Azure to cultivations. Sure. Right. Um, but then I, and I don't remember what the sequence was that got them to the battle of Thalen field. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, but whatever that sequence was, the beta reader said, this isn't, this yeah. doesn't make sense. So it's he added the yeah. lighthouse to put in the promise so that there was, uh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Progress I remember hearing this before that's yeah. uh, okay. So, so I think same thing going on here. And I expect it was a reveal that honors part of honor is in Shinovar. And there was no reason to believe that that was the case. And then right. blindsided the beta readers. Interesting. And so he needed to put something in. Oh, that's, that's my bet. Yeah. Nope. Again, you were kind of using the Sanderson's tricks to kind of decode some stuff. I think you're on the right I'm track. If you're not fooled by the void bringer, if thing. you're not right on the bullseye, I think you're really close. Um, at least I, also could it could it be cultivation herself do you think you've broken my brain she's just pushing she's pushing so many chess pieces she is um, yeah I don't know she, if you no. want to really break your brain, brain uh, a realization I had uh, yesterday was that there are three shards on Roshar. Yeah. And three people that Cultivation chose to give a special deal when they visited the Night Watcher. That's right. One of them has already bonded or ascended to Odium. The other one is well set up to reforge honor and ascend to honor. And the last one is Lyft, who struggles with change and growth, which are the themes of Cultivation. Yep. That's a... Uh, the only question would be, why would Cultivation want to replace everybody, including herself? I don't know, but... Kind of a weird epiphany I had. Man, do you think we haven't seen? So we see the insanity of the heralds living a really long time, and we see that Hoyd has a way of dealing with that by storing his memories. Do you think that shards experience that on a re- on a slower scale, and so cultivation wants to refresh more of the shards before? whatever is going to happen in the future. Interesting. I, yeah. I mean, I think she's, she's either planning a, an attack or a defensive attack in regards to the grander Cosmere and that story okay. coming war. So okay. yeah, I don't know. I don't know if she's villain or hero, but she's doing some, she's doing something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the, the other one was could it be a dawn shard? But then we get more uh, more right. words from it. I just like I, I, that doesn't feel right. But no. yeah, um, there's pretty much no changes in Shalon's POV here. Sure. The only one that's really of note is he changed pattern beating like a vibrant heart to beating to a vibrant rhythm. Mm. Probably nothing. Probably just kind of well, diction no. choices to Hold be more in line though. with what he's. What's that? Hold on though, because in chapter two, or no, chapter one, with Syl, Kaladin mentions she was dancing as if to a rhythm. Uh, what what was the words? Um, let me let me find or search a rhythm here or beat. Maybe it was beat. I just searched rhythm and I didn't pull it up. Uh, beat. As if moving to an inaudible beat. Huh. Yeah. And, you know, if he's cutting words, why keep these phrases in? You know, that's yeah. just like, that's where my mind goes. Like, why is this important? The uh, And I mean... It looks like we're splitting hairs here, guys. I know, but yeah, but damn, really, if you want to, if you want to get put these these theories together and and figure out something before it happens, which is fun, um, yeah, especially when fun. we're wrong and and right. it's still great. And but I'm yeah, this wrong. is this is this is the stuff here. That's 
Hmm. So what if that can't be the case? Bear with me. <laughs> to say um, it. Yeah, maybe may, okay. Without the spren ceasing to exist, what if as part of honor reforming like all of the all of the spren that are made of honor have to be present and they're currently hearing that beat get louder cuz uh didn't didn't uh vin in here in well of ascension and even before that hear that drum beat of the power of the well um increase over time yeah do you do you think it's just as simple as the siblings awake now and so now they can hear that rhythm again ah dang yeah that's probably it that's way smarter. <laughs> that's way that's way simpler it's way smarter it might, i don't know i, I it, it just it's like that that other puzzle piece that just kind of like oh yeah i guess it does it, it's all yeah. just the same thing they could be yeah they could be i mean that's how i that. felt that's how i felt reading it for the first time <laughs> it's like every time i was like oh man i wonder what's driving that i wonder what this really is and then every time it was just oh it's just a spren <laughs> <laughs> what's a shard blade oh it's just a spren what about plate uh it's more spren <laughs> it's like what about Fabrials? Spren. <laughs> Why are they dancing like this? Spren. Spren. Who's gonna be uh Dalinar's champion? Spren. I like there is there is a weird cut. I wasn't gonna mention it, but since we're talking about it, it was like um Sill will do what Sill will do. And here it's like Sill will be Sill. I, I'm pretty sure that was like the exact wording. It's like right. Is that Sil right? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sill will be oh, Sill. Yeah. yeah. Or it was Sil, Sil will Sil, not Sil will do what Sil That's does. Right. Something like that. It was Sil will do Sil. Yeah, it's yeah. weird. Uh, okay, chapter two differences. Um, so we have addition of Kaladin being frightened by the loud noise made by Oridin early on. Clearly yeah. just Showing he's suffering from battle shock. I mean, yeah. the dude went through hell. <laughs> yep. Which uh, I'm glad that, you know, this chapter talks about how um, he's been just going through one fire after the next. And now he finally has a chance to breathe and reflect, um, which are important for stories, you know, gives the yep. characters as well as the reader time to digest stuff. I agree. Do you hear that author of red rising? Do you hear that? Oh, this, I still haven't read that series yet. Um, is that just like one thing after another? I, Yes, I found my own tastes did not line up with how the trilogy was going. Interesting, because there was no rest. I, I I've heard I've heard Sander Sander fans either just love that series or they like just can't do it. It's pretty polarizing. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I uh, I need to read it still. It's pretty good. It's it's solid. It's a solid read. Yeah, it's just space Hunger Games, right? <laughs> uh yeah though i mean there's more to it i know but it is yeah. more it is more um interesting it has more interesting ideas i guess but it mm -hmm. is very very space hunger games okay that's kind of how i felt about sunlit man too it's just like it was too <laughs> fast yeah sunlit man was very fast that was and it's a specific type of story it's a thriller for sure yeah. And we're used to not thrillers necessarily. Um, though if you go from reading the Stormlight Archive to Mistborn, you know, Mistborn feels very, very fast. But yeah, it does. Means, uh, Until yeah. you get to Era 2 and you're like, oh, wait, Era 1 was kind of like epic fantasy still. <laughs> yep. And yeah. Sunlit Man feels the fastest of them all. Yeah. Yeah, really for sure. I mean, it. I... I, I, in my review, I said it's just like high adrenaline, high octane the whole time. Yep. Which I think helps and hurts it at the same time, but I want to be historic day. on the Cosmere Road. Yeah. Yep. Um, we got some huge changes here. Uh, Oridin calls him Gagadin. It used to be Cadden. So mm. I don't know what that can mean, but, <laughs> uh, huge. Probably, um, bear with me here uh <laughs> g's are harder for kids to pronounce and some or are easier for kids to pronounce than ka uh yeah so i just somebody i really out. hope they don't misprint it and it just says like gag din or something like 
Like, what, I doubt that what was happen. the Yumi typo? It was like it made her uh, cream or something. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Um, some other ones is he says pill instead of Phil. <laughs> I oh. kind of like Phil. <laughs> or no, now it's Phil. It used to be now pill. It's Phil, yeah. Yeah. Now it's Phil. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I like Phil better. Yeah. It sounds like trying to say sill. That's Phil. <laughs> Phil. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, poop spren is now dung spren. Those are fair. Those are book breaking changes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read to read. Yeah, them I mean, anymore. we didn't need that because we already had confirmation that uh, Adolin didn't draw poop spren when he crapped his shard plate. That's true. His shard plate. His shard plate. Is there is there a poop joke in every book, or is it? No, joke? I think that's no. like the only one. Words of radiance and this one. Not this one. Yeah. Sorry, book born. I know you don't like those. <laughs> Alas. She, just, she just put out a video talking about that. Oh, really? um, let's see what else. Uh, addition of Spren being more frequent in the tower now. Again, kind of adding to that puzzle right. that we're right. building with Uruthiru and stuff. Um, addition of Kaladin just wondering who he is now. Uh, I don't think that was in the original, mm. which is a nice kind of, again, reflective moment for the character. Yeah. Could also be another thing the beta readers pointed out saying, like, we don't have a clear... What's his goal? What's his personal thing? I'm yeah, like, I mean, but I mean, going to help. Ishii. But didn't didn't we kind of have that at the end of Rhythm of War? He's like, I'm going to help these people, and now he's like, I don't yep. know what to do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Then. Don't you remember what happened in the last book? It was only five years ago. And he's like going on the whole chapter, like I, I will remember. <laughs> like, no, you're already not remembering. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. Um. We have addition of Sill imitating wearing a glove over a safe hand. Again, just adding to that she is becoming more human, which could be related, maybe just semi-related to the life light presence okay. um, influence, right? I don't know. Um, so we have a pretty big addition of Liren explaining why troops might be mobilizing and trying to capture as much uh, land as they can before the deadline. Um, that Kaladin kind of knew he knew that that uh, troops were moving in the original draft, but Sanderson had a note on it saying that this is going to move to like chapter two or three because Kaladin doesn't know that yet, and so mm -hmm. here we we see him learning that with Liren Got after it. some meeting with Dalinar. And then, again, uh, just a ton of additions with the wind dialogues. Um, him, the the wind urging him to listen to the bondsmith. I was I was going to ask you, do you think that's Dalinar or Navani? Because we have two now. Uh, I'm I'm going to go simple simple. The simplest is is right. So Dalinar. Cause... Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't see that being like a huge mystery. Um. And it's not like Navani has asked anything of Kaladin that he hasn't done already. Right. You know, so right. yeah, I, I feel like you're right there. Match. Wait. Um, addition of Joy Spren. I know that you mentioned before, I think we record started recording here that yeah. Joy Spren or like just all of the Spren he adds in later, right? Right. Because he doesn't have that full picture yet. Yeah, doesn't he, doesn't, he doesn't hold that in his brain as he's writing and then um he yeah. just wants to get the character emotions down and then he goes back and add spren where appropriate mm -hmm. interesting kind of like the uh the interludes and the epigraphs he does exactly. those later yeah yep. okay and i mean joy spren he says are like blue leaves i i don't remember that visual i don't have we have we seen joy spren before is this the first time we're seeing them huh it might be oh wow especially around kaladin <laughs> yes <laughs> did you plan that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we tried okay. so hard guys i'm okay that was um <laughs> i'd like to offer my sincerest apologies to the sandbox who came up with a brilliant joke <laughs> and uh and i'm gonna be real my headphones um 
are giving me a lot of are taking up a lot of mental space uh, because they're painful and I'm wondering mm. why. Uh, so I missed that cue um, <laughs> heavily. We can just we can cut that in post. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely. I'm leaving. Well, try again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I can not hold my my laugh through it. Sorry, that's so funny. No, you're fine. Um, I had uh, if only I had not done. Oh, all right. We have two final (laughs) changes here. If you want, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Liren's Liren's parting advice is tweaked. Um, I think now I think it was pretty much the simple addition of telling Kaladin like, be yourself, protect. Um, okay. yeah. which I think is hilarious because so many people think that his fifth ideal will just be like, I am protection. Kind of like the, the skybreakers. Um, sure. I am. Law. I am the law or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one is he changed sills, uh, change in attire from now looking right somehow to, it made her look older, more mature, mm-hmm. which again, is kind of making that her becoming more human, a real thing, not like a silly thing. Definitely. I don't, I don't know. Interesting. Good changes. Can see why in a lot of cases. Curious to see what next week brings. Definitely. I wonder if it'll be one Khaled and one Shalon. I think, um, yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> what would it be? I, I, I think we have to get more Kaladin. I feel like we have to get Seth pretty soon here. It's his book, right? So Yeah, I, I imagine if we look back at a lot of Oathbringer, we get flashbacks as they're kind of happening to Dalinar. Um, like he's experiencing huh. the flashback. We're reading about it. He He's experiencing it in real time. And then we're reading about what happened as he's experiencing it. So, I think we're going to have, I think we're going to have a Shalon chapter with yeah. Kaladin parts in it, with him going to speak to a uh, Dalinar maybe. Okay. Um, and then I think we're going to get, let's say we get three chapters. That'll be one. We'll get um, either Kaladin and Zeth like heading out. They're on their way. Sure. Stuff, maybe some other stuff spliced in there. And then we'll get uh, a Cal- the, the first uh, Zeth flashback or we'll get this, this fla- flashback. And then we'll get them going there. I don't know. Okay. Either way, it'll work. Yeah. That's my guess. I'll be curious to see what happens. I could see him doing Zeth flashbacks before something happens to Zeth. Yeah. Or before I think, a Zeth chapter. I, I, and I think it, it's almost important to, because it kind of primes your mind of like, just your perception of Zeth and like yeah. how to feel about him going into this book. I know what the first flashback we, we both know what it is. Right. And it's a very light and fluffy and like, oh man, like, oh, I love, I can't wait to get right. more Zeth this book. And it's right. good. that's, that's the state of mind you want your readers in for the longest book in the Stormlight Archive so far, which is also Zeth's book. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think you're onto something there. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else before we, Nothing from, before we adjourn? Nothing from me. All right. Well, um, I'll do. Uh, no, we'll leave Griff's part uh, open, like like we're pouring one out for him. Um, and so, life before death, strength before weakness, poop spren before dung spren, before destination. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Okay. <laughs>